Hi, this is Dr. Habib Ahmed, and today I will talk about Roadmap to Filing Patent Applications. Here is the sequence of topics which I am going to cover. I will talk a little bit about my academics and work experience. Then I will give an introduction to intellectual property and patents. I am a PhD alumnus from Georgia Institute of Technology. So I will also talk about my patent filing experience from Georgia Tech as well. Uh, then I will talk about the Intellectual Property Organization of Pakistan. I will discuss filing complete patent specification and filing provisional patent specification. Well, the way it works is initially you prepare the provisional patent specifications and the provisional patent is valid for one year and then during that time you can actually apply for a complete patent specification uh, but first i'm going to cover all the parts of a complete patent specification and then i will discuss how the provisional patent specification works i will talk about the patent forms and their descriptions i will also discuss the average process time for patent office services Currently, I'm working at the Center for Advanced Electronics and Photovoltaic Engineering at International Islamic University, Islamabad. So I will also um, talk about uh, my experience at uh, International Islamic University and I will, I will discuss how to file patents through this university's forum as well. And finally, I will have some conclusive remarks. Well, before proceeding with the presentation, I want to make a disclaimer over here. So, I'm not a patent expert. It takes years on enough to become a patent expert. But I tried my level best to gather as much information as possible regarding the organization for the submission process of a patent. Patent filing requires a lot of effort and persistence. It might take like two to three years uh, from uh, preparing like your patent specifications to then filing to then acceptance and then uh, the final publication of your patent. So also you may like to seek the help of a registered patent agent in attorney because uh, it's uh, really uh, tricky the process is really tricky so um, I did my PhD from Georgia Institute of Technology in December 2021 and I have work experience at NESCOM I worked as a GRA at Georgia Tech and currently I'm working at Kype International Islamic University uh, since August 2022 and <coughs> excuse me I have like around 20 journal papers, um, some conference papers, I submitted some invention disclosures, I have submitted some book chapters, and I have numerous conference presentations and posters. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, here are some glimpses uh, from my PhD work, uh, working on molecular beam epitaxy, working in the clean room environment, here is my PhD advisor, Dr. William Allen Doolittle, proudly presenting one of our inventions. Um, William Allen Doolittle is a full professor at uh, Georgia Institute of Technology, and he is a wonderful, wonderful person as well. But I'm, I'm going to skip some uh, irrelevant slides. Maybe I'm, I will discuss them in detail, maybe in an person workshop or some seminar, etc. So introduction to patent filing and intellectual property organization of Pakistan. <laughs> intellectual property refers to the creations of human mind. And this is the broader category. And then it covers copyrights, trademarks, patents and trade secrets. Copyright gives protection to creative works such as writing or drawing. 
and the examples are books, software, and movies, etc. <coughs> Excuse me. A uh, trademark gives protection to original words or combination of words or symbols or it could be designs that you create to represent your business. Um, and types of trademark could, could be like uh, shape and name, symbol, slogan, the color, a logo type. So you might have observed on a lot of products, they mention this TM at the end of a word. And this indicates that the trademark protection has been claimed. And then in case of some other products, you might have seen this encircled R, which means that the trademark has been registered. Then there are trade secrets, which gives protection to special formulas or programs or techniques that you develop for your business or company. So let me talk about my some personal experiences with one of my friends from Atlanta. I did my PhD from Georgia Tech and Georgia Tech is in Atlanta. And I made some wonderful friends from Atlanta. So here is one great friend of mine. His name is Shafi. And he works at Coca-Cola. So here is the Coca-Cola building uh, where uh, my friend works. And this is actually the headquarter of Coca-Cola in Atlanta, Georgia. So in one of the gatherings where Shafi was actually hosting me and some other uh, friends as well at uh, a lunch, he asked me that, Habib, do you know what is the world's most tightly guarded trade secret and I was like I don't know if you talk about like the most secret formula it may be the, the formula of an atom bomb but I'm not sure about a trade secret and he was like it's actually the formula of coke which is coca-cola <clears throat> and I was like oh wow that is some news for me but anyhow uh, and uh, you see this building, the Coca-Cola building, and this picture is taken, I would say, on July 5th, 2019, at the top of uh, Coca-Cola building, and we were waiting there for the July 5th uh, fireworks. So anyhow, Shavi is a wonderful friend of mine, and I always like to, to give, um, I, I always like to share in-person experiences in my presentations as well. Uh, to remember some great friends and also to link them with whatever is happening during my presentation. Anyhow, I really appreciate Shafi. Moving on. Now let us talk about our topic for today, which is patent. So patent gives exclusive rights for an invention for a limited time period of 20 years. So during those 20 years, once the patent is granted to you, you can use and sell the invention for 20 years. And the patent actually prevents others from making, using, or selling the invention. But the patent protection does not start until the actual grant of a patent. The patent owner may give permission to a third party for using the invention or you can say the patent owner may license the patent to a third party on mutually agreed terms as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, then the owner may also sell the right of the invention to someone else. Uh, just like you sell a property. And there are basically three main categories of patents. Uh, there are utility patents, then there are design patents, and then there are plant patents. Utility patents cater to inventions that introduce novel processes, machines, manufacturing methods, or material compositions, and it focuses on the working of an invention. On the other hand, a design patent 
protects the ornamental appearance or unique design of your invention. So, for example, you might uh, develop a patent, you might develop a new kind of chair, and you can say, you know, this chair has uh, these uh, kind of mechanical movement capabilities. So, the mechanical movements actually cover the methods or the processes or the manufacturing part of your, of your patent. So, you can say that would cover the utility patent. On the other hand, you can say this chair has a sleek appearance and this has uh, this kind of design. So, that part would be covered by the design pattern. Now, utility patterns are valid for 20 years, while design patterns are valid for 15 years. Uh, then another category is plant patterns. Plant patterns are aimed to protect new varieties of plants reproduced asexually. So, by that we mean other than seeds. <clears throat> and then once the pattern expires, uh, the invention enters into public domain. So, I, as I already discussed that a pattern is valid for 20 years. And once that 20 years time period is expired, it enters the public domain. Uh, so, the owner no longer holds exclusive rights to the invention and then it becomes available to commercial exploitation by others as well. So, we discussed that a patent gives rights for an invention. Then what is an invention? What do, we, what do we mean by invention? An invention means anything that is novel, or you can say new and useful. So what do we, what do we mean by novel? An invention shall be considered to be novel or new if it does not form any state of the art, where state of the art comprises everything that is disclosed publicly anywhere in the world. <coughs> so, novel is anything new that is not disclosed to public anywhere in the world. So, an invention could be a product or a process or you can say improvements in any of the above. Where a product could be any substance, object, apparatus or machine, whereas a process is the method of new manufacture of the product. And then like the third category of a pattern could be um, significant improvements in any of the above, significant improvements in the product or significant improvements in the process. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, here is the eligibility criteria for filing patent uh, applications. First, it should be novel. Second, it should be non-obvious, which means that it should not be disclosed to the public. And then it should have some industrial applicability, which means that <coughs> you should be able to manufacture your product. Uh, for a patent, it's a good idea to have a prototype in advance, but even if you don't have the prototype, you should at least demonstrate that your, your patent or the proposed product is manufacturable. And then as I already discussed that an invention is considered to be novel if it does not form any part of the state of the art. Where state of the art is anything that is disclosed publicly anywhere to the world in a tangible form or by verbal disclosure. By that we mean like um, through seminars or conferences or poster presentations, etc. So it should not be disclosed prior to the filing date, or we can say prior to the priority date. Now, it's in, we have some terminology in related to patents and intellectual property, and we need to understand those uh, terminology. So, for example, what do we mean by priority date? Priority date is the first date of filing of a patent application. And then the, another terminology is prior art. 
So by prior art, we mean any evidence that your invention is already known. So if your invention is a prior art, which means that if it is already known to the public, then you cannot claim for the patent. Uh, so your invention should not exist physically or it should not be commercially available as well. So it is enough that someone somewhere sometime has previously described or shown or made something that contains the use of the technology that is very similar to, the, to your invention. So in this case, your invention or your potential patent becomes a prior art and you cannot really file it. Uh, before discussing the intellectual property organization of Pakistan, um, I want to share my experiences at Georgia Tech as well. So for that purpose, let me open another document. Here is the procedure for <coughs> filing patent applications at uh, Georgia Tech. Well, different universities have different policies. At Georgia Tech, the Office of Technology Licensing act actually deals with the uh, patents filing. So Georgia Tech has an intellectual property policy. Um, according to that policy, faculty staff and students should report their inventions to the office of technology licensing prior to publicly disclosing it and the office of technology licensing actually assesses that invention uh, to accurately establish the inventorship and the ownership so the first step is to submit an invention disclosure to the Office of Technology Licensing at Georgia Tech um, in order to file a patent. This is the first step, invention disclosure. And let me show you how the invention disclosure looks like. So for example, here is one of the invention disclosures uh, that I submitted to the Office of Technology Licensing at Georgia Tech. Um, in the invention disclosure, you mention the title, uh, then you mention the details of the inventors. So for example, this is my advisor, William Allen Doolittle. And then you can see like my name over here and then after the details of the inventors, um, we give a brief technical description of our invention, followed by funding sources. Uh, you also talk about any prior art, and then we talk about the commercial potential of that uh, uh, patent or um, any other kind of intellectual property. So this is kind of like a brief document, a preliminary document you can say that uh, you submitted to the Office of Technology Licensing as a first step in uh, patent filing. Um, so once an invention disclosure is received and by the Office of Technology Licensing, a licensing professional gets in touch with the inventors for the evaluation of the invention uh, to determine what kind of intellectual property is involved and to determine if it should be protected by a patent or a copyright. As you can see over here, uh, they need to determine whether it can be patented or whether it can be copyrighted. So it depends on whether like it's, it's a book chapter or some other kind of creative work. Uh, book, books are actually copyrighted. Uh, then you can say software programs are also copyrighted. 
movies, etc., uh, they are protected by copyrights. While inventions, um, if it is a product or a process or significant improvements in any of the uh, any of these two, it is covered by patent protection. So uh, then, the Office of Technology Licensing evaluates its commercial potential and patentability as well. They determine whether it can be marketed or licensed to industry for further development um, and commercialization as well. So here is the here is the first step and here is the procedure for patent filing at uh, Georgia Tech. I'm going to close this one. Let me go back to my presentation. Um, <clears throat> we already discussed the prior art. Uh, then let us talk about uh, the procedure for patent filing in Pakistan. In Pakistan, we have an organization for this purpose, and it is called the Intellectual Property Organization of Pakistan. It was established in 2005 under the uh, control of Cabinet Division. And then in 2016, the control was transfer transferred to the Commerce Division. Uh, the goal of the Intellectual Property Organization of Pakistan is to have an integrated and efficient intellectual property management in the country. Uh, then its major functions are uh, to develop a system for the protection and also for the strengthening of the intellectual property. Uh, they also contact different universities to create awareness about the intellectual property rights in different domains. And one of their major functions is to ensure the effective enforcement of the intellectual property rights through designated agencies, for example, police, FIA, and Pakistan Customs. Um, patentable inventions in Pakistan. In order for, a, for an invention to be patentable, uh, the invention should be a process or a product. Now, we already discussed what we mean by a process or a product. Um, a product is any substance or object or apparatus or machine, whereas a process is method of new manufacturing of the product. So uh, it should be, the invention should be a process or a product or improvement in any of the above. And this is international criteria as well. And the patent should be capable of industrial application, which means that it should be um, capable of being manufactured. It's good if you have, a, a, if you already have a prototype uh, on your invention, but even if you do not have a prototype, you should at least demonstrate that your invention is manufacturable. Um, here are some examples of non-patentable inventions in Pakistan. Um, examples are a discovery or scientific theory, uh, mathematical equations, uh, dramatic or musical work, uh, some mental act, uh, for example, playing a game or doing business, uh, computer software. Well, some of them, for example, computer software, books, and movies, etc., dramatic work, they are covered by copyrights. Uh, then some other non-patentable inventions uh, include anything which, which goes against the public order or morality um, um, in order to protect human, animal, or plant life. And then surgical methods are also non-patentable in Pakistan. Uh, let's talk about another process, which is right of priority. So intellectual rights are territorial, which means that a patent or a trademark or a copyright is only valid in the country in which the protection was given 
if you want to claim rights in another country, you need to file for the protection rights in that country in a third country as well. Uh, well, then there is a terminology is called right of priority. So if you filed an initial application in a country that is member of the Paris Convention, you have a certain period during which you can also apply for protection uh, of the invention in another member of the convention without losing your rights. <clears throat> then what is Paris Convention? Paris Convention was held like in 1880 and then it was validated in 1883. Initially it had a few members, but right now I think it has like 192 members and Pakistan is one of the members. So uh, the right of priority is valid for six months for a trademark and for 12 months for patent rights. It, it means that, for example, consider Pakistan. Um, you filed for, for a patent in Pakistan, then you have 12 months in order to apply for protection of the same patent in another member of the Paris Convention country. And um, we did it in case of one of our inventions at Georgia Tech as well. So let me open that one. Here is uh, our patent application. And for this patent application, we like initially submitted uh, uh, an invention disclosure at Georgia Tech. If you go to the Office of Technology Licensing, uh, you will see um, this invention disclosure. And like here are the inventors of this invention disclosure. My advisor, Dr. William Allen Doolittle, uh, but then me and uh, my colleagues. So anyhow. And here is the application. Uh, the initial filing date was uh, uh, 11th of January 2022 and then we within a year we filed it like uh, by 11th of January 2023 we filed we filed it internationally as well but although this is a different kind of application it's called a patent cooperation treaty application it's uh, slightly different than uh, what we discussed uh, so far so uh, like a patent cooperation treaty is actually an international patent law treaty. It was concluded in 1970. And the if you file uh, an inter international application through patent cooperation treaty, it's called PCT patent application. And PCT gives applicants patent protection internationally for, for their inventions in 157 countries, like simultaneously. You don't have to apply to uh, each and every country separately. <clears throat> And unfortunately, Pakistan is not a member of PCT so far. But um, intellectual property of Organization of Pakistan is trying their level best to include Pakistan in a patent cooperation treaty as soon as possible as well. So hopefully within a year, we will see Pakistan there as well. Uh, so we already talked about right of priority. Uh, types of patent applications. Uh, there are ordinary patent applications. It involves provisional or complete specification, which we are going to discuss in a bit. Uh, then there are convention patent applications, uh, which are for claiming right of priority, which we already discussed, uh, which means that if you file application in one country, you can claim the rights for that in another member of the Paris Convention within 12 months. Uh, then there is application for a patent of addition. Um, so if you have already filed a patent, you can add improvements or modifications to that using application for a patent of addition. And then there is a patent cooperation treaty as already discussed. Um, it is an international patent law treaty uh, concluded in 1970 and it gives apl applicants 
protection internationally simultaneously in 157 countries. Uh, but it involves a high fee as well. Like for example, for this patent, aluminum nitride based high power devices and methods of making the same, uh, we deposited a fee of $2570. I mean, not exactly me, but my advisor through the university, uh, Dr. Doolittle, uh, he submitted a fee of $2570, uh, which is $2570. So here is a good suggestion. File first, publish later. So we already know that a patent can only be granted for an invention which has not been publicly dis disclosed. It should be novel or new. And novel is something which is not, which, does, which does not form state of the art. Where state of the art is anything that is publicly disclosed anywhere in the world. So your patent can only be granted if it is not disclosed to the public neither in writing nor orally. So it's a good idea not to publish the invention in any way before filing the patent application uh, in, uh, in the form of own publications or lectures or posters, uh, thesis, dissertations, uh, research applications, press releases, presentations at fairs, etc. So let me give you an example as well. Um, I completed my PhD in uh, December 2021 and I submitted my thesis to the university, to Georgia Tech uh, in December 2021. But since we had a plan to uh, file patents um, and some part of some some parts of the, of the patterns were also discussed in my thesis, so we withheld the thesis from public for a year. So my thesis was not public uh, until December 2022. In the meantime, we filed for a patent on 11th of Jan 2022. Now, um, let, let us discuss filing complete patent specifications. The first step in filing patent application is to pre prepare a draft, which is called a patent specifications. And it sets out in a really clear manner the terms by which the patent owner and others will be bound. So it's, it's really crucial and it's tricky as well. And drafting a patent application is actually different from writing a scientific paper. Every specification, whether it is provisional or complete, shall begin with the title and it should be signed and dated as well at the end by the applicant or by the patent agent. Here is the structure or you can say the organization of a complete patent specification. Uh, it should include title of the invention, abstract, field of the invention, background of the invention, detailed description, claims and drawings. And we will discuss each one of them one by one. So the title of the invention should be sufficiently enough so that it indicates the subject matter of the invention. And we should avoid being overly narrow or being overly broad. For example, here is an example of our patent, and here is the title. Abstract includes all the important technical aspects of the invention. So abstract is actually like it's uh, roughly it covers around two pages. It should comments on a new sheet, and it should mention all those technical features of the invention which are going to be disclosed in detailed description of your invention. So in, in, in some ways it is similar to write like to the abstract of a research paper, but it's not exactly the same as the abstract of a research paper. Uh, then field of the invention. 
So you have to address the question, what area does the invention relate to? For example, if you are talking about a new accessory for a motor car, assume that you want to develop a new accessory for a motor car. You want to develop a device which tells you the number of kilometers or miles that you can drive before you run out of fuel. So you need to mention a field of the invention uh, for that accessory. And you can say this invention relates to mo motor cars, more specifically an accessory for a motor car. And here is the field of disclosure for our pattern. Then you, you need to mention the background of the invention. Why is the invention necessary? You need to mention, for example, uh, developing an accessory for a car which tells you the number of kilometers or miles that you can drive before you run out of fuel. It is necessary, right? It is crucial for us to know, otherwise we would run out of, of, of fuel and we would just uh, stand on the, on the road. We cannot get anywhere. And then you need to mention what has it been developed, developed out of. For example, as I already mentioned, developing a car accessory which tells you the number of kilometers or miles you can drive before you run out of fuel. Also, it is important to, to discuss some prior art here as well. Like for example, um, in car we have a meter which tells us that uh, you're about to run out of fuel or your fuel tank is getting empty. So that is the prior art, but it does not exactly tell us the num number of kilometers that we can drive before we run out of fuel. So we need to discuss the shortcomings of the prior art. And the background should not be more than uh, two pages uh, and not more than 10% of the total content of the application. Uh, then we need to include detailed description of our invention. And we, we need to address stuff such as how exactly does our invention work. Uh, we need to discuss in detail the exact components, systems, methods that make our invention work. And it should be so obvious that a skilled person in our area should be able to reproduce it using the instructions or using the detailed description given in our pattern. And we should avoid phrases such as the invention is. For example, let us talk once again about the developing a device which tells us the number of kilometers we can drive before we run out of fuel. So you can say this invention is applicable to a car, but it's not a good idea because now you're only specific to a car. You're not covering uh, a, a motorcycle, you're not covering a truck, you're not covering other kind of vehicles. So it's a good idea to use some broader terms. Like for example, you can say, instead of saying the invention is, you can say in an embodiment of the invention. So that way you cover broader um, areas. And this will ensure that your patent claims receive the broadest interpretation possible. Um, here is detailed description of uh, our patent. Then uh, you have to include a claims part into your patent as well. And claims are actually precise legal statements in the form of single sentences that define the scope of your inventions. Uh, claims should, should also be commenced on a new sheet. There is at least one independent claim and other dependent claims. And I'm going to discuss it with the help of an example in the next slide. Uh, the claims usually begin with I or V claim and they should be sub subsequently numbered and presented in the order from broadest to narrowest. Um, in the opening statement of your claims, you should indicate whether uh, your patent is related to a product or whether it is related to a process. 
now what do we mean by a product a product is any substance object apparatus or machine and a process is a new method of manufacturing of the product so here is an example uh, you start with I claim as already discussed in the previous slide you start with I or we claim and then you mention a device as I already discussed in the previous slide that you need to mention whether it is a process or a product product so when we say a device it means we are talking about a product a device comprising a pencil and a light attached to the pencil so now this is an independent claim we are talking about the main object initially and then you make dependent claims uh, for example claim number two is the device as claimed in claim one wherein the light is detachably attached to the pencil so here we are making a, a claim that we can actually attach or detach the light from the pencil uh, then claim number three is the device as claimed in claim number two wherein the pencil is made up of wood so then you can you can make more number of claims here is an example of uh, our claims uh, from uh, our patent at uh, Georgia Tech so we start is with uh, what is claimed is a device so we are talking about a product comprising of this and that and then we make like this is an independent claims and then we make further dependent claims uh, well, in this um, patent, we actually made around 60 number of claims. And it's really crucial to cover each and every claim to, to cover your product so that uh, uh, to avoid any kind of legal complexities in the future. Uh, then you also need to include drawings. And you need to execute the drawings without coloring in black uh, and it should be sufficiently dense and dark and well with well defined lines to permit satisfactory rep reproduction. So if somebody wants to copy it, it should be visible enough. Uh, then inside the patent document, we mention reference to the drawings and specifications under the heading brief description of the drawings. So we include another section called the brief description of the drawings uh, in order to further elaborate our invention with the help of drawings. So for example, here in our pattern, we have included a brief description of the drawings. Uh, now, uh, we already covered the filing complete pattern specifications and we talked about different sections of filing the complete specifications there these are different sections of filing complete specifications uh, a provisional patent specification is similar to a complete uh, specification but it is a quick way for inventors to establish a filing date for for their in process invention so for example uh, you might still be developing some parts of your invention and uh, at that point you are not ready to prepare a complete specification of your pattern so you can prepare a provisional provisional pattern specification it's uh, it has similar sections as that of a complete specification but you can actually file a provisional provisional pattern specification and later you can add more sections to the provisional pattern specification uh, in order to make the complete pattern specification. Uh, the provisional pattern specification is valid for 12 months and it is not examined by the patent office. So the patent office does not actually examine it for, uh, they do not review it. Only a complete specification is examined or you can say reviewed by the patent examiners. Um, so, as already discussed, it's crucial to note that the provisional specification is valid for 12 months and within that time period, you need to submit a complete specification then. 
Um, let us uh, look at some of the pertinent forms and their descriptions for the intellectual property organization of Pakistan. Um, so initially, uh, let us look at the ordinary, or you can say non-convention patent applications. It involves form P1 in case the inventor is a sole or joint applicant or form P1A uh, when the inventors are not a party to applications or when the application is filed by some assignee or company or organization. Then along for ordinary patent applications along with form P1 you also need to file form P3A for complete specification or Form P3 for provisional, which you can also call it incomplete specification. Uh, you need Form P28 for authorization in case you are filing it through a patent attorney or agent. Uh, for application uh, from a student or employee of an institution, for example, like a university or research institute and organizations, uh, you also need to submit a no objection certificate from the respective department as well. Uh, here is a snapshot of form P1, which is the application for patent when the true and first inventor is sole or joint applicant. And here is the fee involved for submitting this form P1 to the Intellectual Property Organization of Pakistan. So um, up, to, up to 40 pages, here is the fee. But beyond 40 pages, for every additional page, uh, you need to deposit an additional fee as well, which is given over here. And then up to 20 claims, here is the fee. But beyond 20 claims, you need an additional fee of uh, uh, PKR 225. Uh, here is a snapshot of form P1A. Uh, when the application for patent is uh, uh, in, in case when the true and uh, first inventor is not a party to the application. So submitting uh, an application through a third party. And here is the fee involved uh, for additional pages as well and for claims beyond 20 as well. Uh, then, uh, for convention patent applications, uh, <clears throat> as we already discussed, um, this is required in case of uh, right of priority. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, in case you file an initial application, for example, in Pakistan, and now you want to file it in uh, another country, which is a member of the Paris Convention, you need to file convention patent application. So for that purpose, you need form P2 uh, for sole or joint applicant or form P2A when the inventors are not a party to the application. And along that, you need form P3A for complete specifications, form P28 for authorization of the patent attorney. And then a priority document is also required uh, because you already filed it in uh, your home country and you want to find it, file it in another country. Uh, here is a snapshot of Form P2, which is the convention pattern application. Uh, the fee, etc., is mentioned over here on the left. Uh, Form P2A, in case when the true or first inventor is not a party to the application and the fee but this is mentioned over here as well uh, form p3 for provisional specifications uh, it involves a fee of 2025 pakistani rupees uh, then here is the fee for beyond 40 pages and the fee for beyond 20 claims form p3a for complete specifications the fee involved is given over here on the left side sealing of the pattern so, once you file a patent application and once it's uh, uh, reviewed, then it is open to the public for a particular amount of time. 
It's around four months, I would say. So when it is open to the public, then there are two possibilities. Either there is no opposition to the patent application or there is opposition to the patent application. So if the application has not been opposed and the time for filing the opposition has been expired or if the application has been opposed and the opposition has been finally decided in favor of the applicant, then it's called sealing of the patent. And for sealing of the patent, another application is required, another request is required. Here is a snapshot of that request. Uh, it is called Form P10. Then, um, when everything goes well and the patent is granted, initially it is valid for uh, four years. But from five to eight years, you need to deposit additional fee. And then from nine to 12 years, more fee. And then from 13 to 16, more fee. And then from 17 to 20, more fee. So, I mean, to say like it involves a lot of effort and it involves money as well at uh, different steps. Um, here are some more patent forms given in this slide. Some more forms. Average process time for patent office services. Um, so I, I mentioned in the start that patent filing requires a lot of effort, a lot of work, and it also requires a lot of persistence as well. Um, so, and then we are talking about the timeline. So once you submit a patent application, it takes uh, at the Intellectual Property Organization of Pakistan, it takes around a week for initial acknowledgement and uh, receipt of the filing application. Uh, then the first examination report is issued within 18 months. That's a long time, right? Uh, then if the examination review committee, if they ask you to make some changes, uh, then the review action and reply, it might, take, it might take three more months. And then the acceptance and sub subsequent publication, uh, it might take two more months. Um, for sealing, uh, so after the initial, I would say, uh, 18 months to two years, uh, then it's open to public for a time of four months. Uh, and then the sealing, takes around six months, four months when it's open to the public and then some further processing. Um, and then the issuance of registration certificate uh, takes around 10 days. Um, so for that, like after the seeding is done, you need to submit form P10 for seeding. Um, so if everything goes well, it, it, it might take around two years for a grant of the patent. But during the seeding time, if there comes some opposition and if the opposition is strong, it might take an accumulated time of two, two more years to decide the patent opposition proceedings. And then one month for the patent search report, one month for uh, some other hearings. And uh, there, are, there is also a possibility that even if the patent is granted, a uh, revocation of the patent might also occur uh, if it is a prior art or something like that. And the process time to decide the patent revocation is one year. So it takes, a, it's a, it takes persistence and it takes a really long time for a grant of the patent application. Uh, here is a checklist. Of the forms, uh, you need forms like P1 or P1A, form P2 or P2A in case of convention application. This is for ordinary application. Uh, for provisional, you need form P3. For a complete specification, you need form P3A. You need two copies of each one of them. Then you need two copies of the patent specifications, two copies of the drawings, uh, pay order, original, and a copy as well. Uh, for power of attorney, you need to submit form P28. Uh, for priority document for convention application, you need a copy of that. And you need no objection certificate if you are filing from, uh, for example, from a university. Uh, 
Then I will also talk about our university's policy. Currently, I'm working at the Center for Advanced Electronics and Photovoltaic Engineering at International Islamic University, Islamabad. Uh, we have a patents policy. Uh, so the patent developed by the university's faculty, students, and researchers in their own personal time, when they are not connected to the university's research and they are not developed with the university's resources, in that case, the patent would belong to the staff, the concerned staff or students or researchers. However, if for the patent, substantial use of the university resources is uh, involved, then the university has joint joint ownership along with the creator of the patent. And once the patent, so the uni university files for the patent, and once the patent is granted, then we talk about the royalty, we talk about the income sharing, we talk about money, right? Mucho dinero. So, um, initially, uh, when we are at the stage of income, uh, the university is going to deduct all the costs which are directly related to the registration and management of the intellectual property. And we are talking about the patents, so related to the patents. And after that, the net income will then be distributed among the uh, university and the creators with a ratio of 70 to 30%. So the creator gets 70% and the university's share is 30%. And then different universities internationally have their own policies. <laughs> Here is the process flow. Initially, the creator will disclose all the potential in, uh, intellectual property to the Office of Research, Innovation and Commercialization at the university before communicating it in public domain. And then the Office of Research, Innovation and Commercialization, they help, with, uh, they help the inventor with the writing of the patent application. Uh, the ORIC office, uh, they bear all the costs related to the patents filing at Pakistan level. Uh, in, in Pakistan, we submitted to the Intellectual Property Organization of Pakistan. However, in case we need to apply for international patents, then both the inventor and the ORIC office at the university, they make joint efforts to seek funding sources for filing the patent internationally. Um, the university will be the applicant of the intellectual property rights and the inventors will be listed as such in the application. And the ORIC office coordinates the entire process of filing till the award of the patent application with the Intellectual Property Organization of Pakistan. Uh, finally, some conclusive remarks. Um, so here is the process flow. We write the provisional or complete patent specifications, and then we attach the relevant uh, forms to Intellectual Property Organization of Pakistan uh, and seek the help of office uh, of the Office of Research, Innovation, and Commercialization for onwards patents submission. Um, so here, here is a final remark from me. Uh, patent filing re requires a lot of hard work and persistence. Uh, might take two to three years from submission of the patent to granting of the patent. Involves a lot of fee as well. So before all that process, you need to make, you need to make a critical analysis. First of all, whether it's a prior art or not, where prior art is any evidence that your invention is already known. So you, you need to search for that. Um, if there is any prior art available, then it's not worth the effort. Secondly, we need to make a critical analysis of the income versus the, inf the, the effort that we put into our patent application. 
Uh, if at the end of the day, if after two to three years, uh, we do not anticipate licensing, or if we do not anticipate a major income from our patent, then it's not worth the effort. Uh, just for adding it into your resume is not good enough. You should expect some income from your potential patent. And if, it's not, if that's not the case, it's not worth the effort. Uh, with that remark, I'm going to say goodbye. I hope this information was useful for you. And I will talk to you next time. Adios.